Today I'm going to explain in overall how basic home solar panel system works. But as an example I will use a small scale, using small panels and components. But anyway in this way we could get a basic idea of how this system works. I will try to explain why we need each part, the function of each component and the final setup. We will also talk about power, efficiency, how to store energy and boost our voltage in order to use it for our homes with everyday gadgets. Before we start make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future videos. Also thanks to all my patrons for the support. So let's get started. This video is sponsored by GLC PCB which upgraded their factory so now they can offer 5 pieces of common 2 layer PCBs with a production time of only 24 hours and that without any additional fees. So for that prototyping become faster than before but for the same low price. Upload the Gerber file, select the PCB settings and order high quality PCBs for a few dollars. What's up my friends, welcome back. Before we take a look over the components that we need, let's first look on how a solar panel system is connected. There are two main types of systems, one that uses batteries and one without batteries. The difference is obvious, one will store energy in the batteries for future use and the other one will directly put the power into the main national grid. I can't say which one is better depends on the money that you want to invest, the country that you live in, the period of time that you want to use the panels and so on. I will explain the system with the battery bank since it is a little bit more complex. If we know how this one works, we will know how the other one works as well. Ok, so first component are the solar panels. These panels will give us DC voltage when they are exposed to the sunlight. Next we need a charging circuit that will charge up the battery pack. Now from the battery pack we take the energy and using an inverter we go from steady DC voltage to AC voltage and using a transformer we boost up the values up to 220 volts or other values depending on the country that you live in. This voltage could supply your home when needed or be connected to the main national grid of your country and by that you would be able to sell the energy that you produce. We won't talk about legal terms in this video. Ok, so first thing first we need the solar panels. In my case, as a small example, I have these very small panels that could deliver around 0.3 watts of power. Usually the voltage of all in one cell could be around 0.5 volts, which is a very low value. That's why any common solar panel or this small board here has multiple cells, so if I measure it under direct light I could get up to 4.5 volts or more. But even so this is still low voltage considering we should later charge 12 volts or 24 volts batteries. Usually any home solar panel system uses solar panels of 12 up to 14 volts and also 12 volts lead acid batteries. Peak solar panels will have more than 36 cells in order to deliver up to 14 volts and those will need around 2 square meters of roof area. Put the panels in parallel and you will get more current. Put them in series and you will get more voltage just as the batteries. Ok, but the voltage from the solar panels is not a steady value. It could change depending on the sunlight, if there are clouds or not and so on. That's why between the batteries and the solar panels we have a charging circuit. This device will output always 12 volts or 24 volts at a constant current and protect the batteries of overcharge, over discharge and so on. In my case, for this small example, I could use this 5V Leon battery charger and a small battery. In real life home systems, this is a much more complicated and bigger circuit. Also a more expensive solution, instead of using a general charger for all the panels, you could use a so called microcharger, one for each panel. If a small part of the panels is covered by shadow, that will affect a lot the entire output power if you only use a general battery controller for all the panels. Using microchargers, they will adapt the output power of each panel, even those are under shadow, and then connect them to the general charger. Ok, but in my case, the charger needs a steady 5 volts, so for that we will need a boost converter as well. So the solar panel is connected to the boost converter that will always give us 5 volts, even if the output from the solar panel is much lower. 
The charging circuit of this module will control the current and the voltage and will charge up the batteries and will stop the charging process when the battery is full. At a large scale, the panels could be connected in series and give us 24 volts. And the boost circuit together with the charging circuit could be together inside of the same component called battery solar controller. That will charge some 12 volts batteries in series, creating a steady 24 volts voltage. Ok, so till now we have our energy stored. But this will be DC voltage. And our house will need high AC voltage. For that we need an inverter. Please watch my video on how I've made my crude homemade inverter circuit in order to understand how this circuit works. This kind of circuit will take those 24 volts or in our case for this small example 3.7 volts of DC voltage from the batteries and turn that into an oscillating AC voltage. In the past video my circuit created a square wave, which is not that good with high tech gadgets. To get good results, home solar panel systems are using a full sine wave inverter. That will give us a perfect sine wave as any home outlet will have. Ok, so once we have our 24 volts AC voltage, all we need is to increase that voltage using a transformer and that's it. We get the energy from the sun using the panels and then we store it into the batteries using the charging circuit. Then we create our AC voltage using the inverter and boost it up with the transformer. This is a very general setup. If we don't use batteries, the solar panel would be connected directly to the inverter and then connected to the national grid. Doing this requires less components but would involve more legal terms with the electric company. Ok, now some things to have in mind. Connecting your AC voltage to the main grid AC voltage of your country is not that easy. The signal must be in sync one to each other, have the same value and so on, so a syncing device must be used. Also, to power up a basic mother home, you would need at least 10 kWh of power that requires around 24 huge solar panels mounted on your roof and at the same time a lot of 200 amperes hour batteries to be able to store the energy during the day and use it overnight. If you're planning to install a system like this one on your home and save some money, you should have in mind. First, study how much sunlight you will get where you live and how many sun hours for each day. I'll put a calculator website below. Also how much electricity cost in your area and if you have different suppliers to choose from. Make sure to know how much power your home usually uses during days of summer and winter and once you know the average, choose the right power kit to buy. Investing in a much expensive system could be a good idea since you will get a more reliable power for more years. Well, in general, these are all the components of a home solar panel system. I hope you've made a general idea of how this works. If you're interested in a more detailed explanation about solar cells and charging circuits, leave your comment in the comment section below. Also consider helping my projects on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell for future videos. Also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember that your help on Patreon means a lot for me and will keep these kind of videos going. Thanks again and see you later guys.